All right, how is it going everyone? So I made this video where I did like a practice react interview question. In the video, I basically made a form and I made it a controlled, a form that had controlled inputs, right? So controlled inputs in React means you put an on change listener and you put a value property on the inputs so that React controls the actual like updating of that, the, the input. Um, and when I made that, uh, I got a couple of comments that are kind of confusing to me. Um, so a lot of people saying that I should always use uncontrolled inputs, right? This is a perfect example to use uncontrolled inputs because now you are re-rendering all the time. When I see people complaining about re-rendering, it kind of makes me cringe a little bit because I don't think they actually understand how fast re-rendering is in React and how long a millisecond is to a user. Someone else said uncontrolled input plays use effect with word as dependency. Okay, so someone else is saying I should use an uncontrolled input. Um, up here, in this case, building the on change event to update state that holds input value is bad practice. So I'm being told that this is actually bad practice. You should use a ref on the input then access this data via ref.current.value. So who's wrong? Who's right? Was the video where I did a controlled input, is that bad practice? Or is this guy actually right? So let's try to look into that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to react docs, uncontrolled components. Okay, and let's just look at what react tells us. The first sentence, in most cases, we, recommending, we recommend using controlled components to implement forms. So straight from the source of truth itself, they say you should be using controlled components. Now they do say in most cases. So there's probably some cases where you don't want controlled inputs and controlled forms. So with that being kind of just stated, that comes straight from the React docs. Don't go around saying that using a on-change event listener is bad practice. Like, Okay, first of all, you're just contradicting the React docs. And secondly, I want to kind of address uh, why this isn't an issue, right? So someone else mentioned something about re-renders, which always kind of triggers me for some reason because I don't think these people actually understand how fast re-rendering is. So let's talk about it. Let's go to a little application that I built. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the code and what this is. So I have a, a form that has about, I think this is like 20 inputs, right? And with a form of 20 inputs, this form is actually a controlled component, right? I'm, I'm rendering out a controlled form. Now, if I look at this code real quick, we have a couple of interesting things in this, uh, this app with controlled. We have some state that keeps track of the form. We have some errors that keep track of the errors. And whenever you change these inputs, we invoke an on change click listener or on change event listener which calls this method, which basically sets an error if you were to forget to fill out any of these inputs. It's a really basic error handling situation. And then we also update the form value as you change your values. And then we also have a button that resets the entire form back to the initial form data here and clears out the error. So it's a really bare bones form. It's really simple. Um, but I wanted to add like some error handling just to kind of simulate a more realistic form that's re-rendering and stuff. And then we would loop over all these keys. I think there's about 20 something keys. And in most forms, I have never seen a form with more keys than this. Usually it's like half or a third of this many keys. So in most scenarios, a controlled input works fine. And the code that is used to con like implement the controlled input is actually pretty clear and concise because now I can update styles using state. I can update any type of a conditional rendering using state. As you can see, I'm using this error state to dynamically add a border of red. I'm using the error state to dynamically render or hide this errors. So if I go back over here and just delete that, you'll see that it highlights in red and then it shows errors. So it's a really basic form. And as I kind of step through it, you can kind of do that. Pretty responsive too, it's pretty fast. So let's actually reset the form. I want to show you how slow is it to re-render this component in React. Because remember, anytime you change state in a component, it re-renders the entire component. So if I were to change anything about this form, so any of these fields, it's going to re-render the entire component. But is that an issue? In most cases, it's not. So let's just go ahead and click on the profiler here. I got the React profiler set up. Um, and before you make statements about re-rendering being slow, make sure you load this thing up and actually verify you know what you're talking about. So if I click the record button and I delete one of these and go ahead and click stop. Notice that it took 2.7 milliseconds to re-render this form. Okay. 
Now let's think about 2.7 milliseconds. How slow is 2.7 milliseconds to a user clicking on your application? That is completely unnoticeable. 2.7 seconds, you do not notice any delay. So for the people who complain that like React, you know, you're re-rendering, everything is slow. This, this is the proof that like you need to stop worrying so much. Re-rendering is pretty fast. And I would say until you actually have an issue where your re-rendering is taking longer than like 50 milliseconds or more, or you see a noticeable slowdown in your UI, you don't need to worry about these ray renders. And I want to show you, even if I were to go to the performance thing and throttle my CPU by six times slower, let's do the same thing and let's just see how much slower this actually is. I'm going to clear out this. I'm going to go ahead and click record. I'll delete this, delete this. I will click reset form and I will stop. And notice that with a six times slower CPU, it dropped the rendering duration to, I mean, it increased it to about four milliseconds. Okay, so we're still in a really good range of like speed. Four milliseconds is super fast to a human reaction time. I don't know what the actual reaction speed is to a human, but I'm pretty sure it's much over four milliseconds. Okay, so you won't even notice the delay. And the question is like, at what point do you have too many inputs where this is going to start slowing down? There is a case where you might have too many inputs and you have to do a uncontrolled approach to speed things up. And I'm not saying an uncontrolled input is not useful. But for the most, most cases in most UIs that I've seen, you never have a form that has this in many inputs that needs the performance tuning of an uncontrolled. Now let's look at the uncontrolled. I'm going to do the same thing. Let's just go over here and uncomment the uncontrolled one and comment out the controlled one. And I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And let's look at the uncontrolled. So the same thing happens. If I were to click uh, and delete some of these, we still get errors and I can reset. But the main difference is if I click on this record button, as I'm changing these inputs, React is actually doing absolutely nothing. React does not control these inputs, so React does not try to re-render anything about these inputs. And that is, I guess, the argument that an uncontrolled input is more performant. And I would say you are right. It is a little bit more performant if you think two milliseconds is really a make, or, make it or break it in terms of your application speed. But usually it's not always about performance. It's also about code maintainability. Okay, so if we look at the uncontrolled solution, now again, I don't know if I'm 100% doing this correctly or if there's ways to kind of do this differently, but in order to not have this component re-render at all, you can't use any type of state, you can't update any type of state. So basically every input, I'm keeping track of a map of refs. So I have a use ref here that gives us back a refs object. And then down here, when I make the inputs, I pass a callback to that refs property and I store that element inside of this refs object so I can later look them up and do stuff with them. So right off the bat, you'll notice that I don't have any like conditional rendering going on. I actually have a display of none um, for the styling of the actual red of the input border. Uh, that is actually added at a later point dynamically through vanilla JS. So whenever you use refs, you're actually doing lower level DOM manipulation using like JavaScript, which means that there's going to be a bunch of extra boilerplate, which also means that there's a higher chance that you're going to screw up your code and introduce bugs because you're writing a lot more code to do something really simple that React would have done out of the box for us. So to get this to work with an uncontrolled uh, approach, basically when this component mounts, I have a use effect and I have to loop over all of the inputs, which is here. I loop over all those inputs by key, and I add an event listener to listen to when someone types into the input box. And then I call this on input callback, which basically checks, you know, does the validation if the value is empty string, make the border red, make the display block to show that little errors hint. And then if it isn't an empty string, then, you know, get rid of the border and then also hide that errors hint. So right off the bat, like you look at this code, this is not as concise as the React code we just saw a second ago. This is a lot more harder to manage. And this is the one reason we got away from JavaScript because this stuff can get overly complex pretty quick. And unless you have a real desire or need to do lower level DOM manipulation, honestly, I would try to avoid it. I would try to avoid using refs and just use React the way React was meant to be used. Now also you have to remember that this is a use effect. So now you have to make sure you return a cleanup function and loop over and remove all those event listeners. So you have to know more about React and how the cleanup works and all that. And then over here we have a handle reset button. Now what this is doing is it's manipulating all of the 
input refs, changing the border to none, uh, which is here, setting the border color to black or default, and then it resets the value back to the original value that was set up above. In my eyes, in my opinion, this code is a lot more unmanageable compared to this code, which is a lot more manageable. Now, maybe it's because I'm more used to React by now and I don't use you know vanilla JavaScript as much, but the styles, you can easily look at the, com the component and the code and the elements and see, okay, the way this border changes is via state changing. And the way this state changes is when someone types. You go over to the uncontrolled, it's not as straightforward. The way that the style of the border changes is, well, we don't know, it's not here. It's been coded, encoded inside of this callback, and you have to kind of dive through this and understand what's going on. Now, obviously, this is kind of a, a simple example. I could make helper functions called like set uh, input border red or something like that. And we can call these helper functions from here so that it's a little bit cleaner of like what's going on. Right, I guess e.target. And I can do stuff like this to make the code a little bit easier to understand and read. But honestly, at this point, you're trying to do all this extra stuff. You're trying to do lower level JavaScript DOM manipulation for the sake of saving two milliseconds for your users or four milliseconds if you're on a really slow computer, as we saw with this four, uh, six times slowdown. So my response to the people who left these comments are, y'all need to stop worrying about re-renders and y'all need to stop worrying so much about making your components extremely uh, performant because in most cases you're worrying about stuff that's not that important. Now I will say that um, there's a library called React Hook Form which actually does do uncontrolled uh, uh, inputs because like we said it doesn't have to force React to re-render. So in a sense it is more performant but you just saw from my example and hopefully my example wasn't filled with some type of like plot holes but you literally just saw in my example that re-rendering a form with 20 inputs literally took two milliseconds. So if you're gonna like sweat over two milliseconds, then I think you're worrying about the wrong stuff to begin with. Anyway, if you guys like this little experiment where I'm just kind of showing you controlled inputs versus uncontrolled inputs, when you wanna use one or the other, uh, you know, let me know, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. Also feel free to join my Discord if you wanna to talk to me directly or if you wanna get help with any of your React uh, challenges. We have a bunch of people who are willing to help you out if you're stuck. So just go ahead and join our Discord and ask your questions and we'll try to help you out. Anyway, uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned something from watching this. Um, just bothers me that people keep saying that React re-renders are so, so scary, but really you guys need to stop worrying about React re-renders. It's just kind of annoying. Anyway, have a good day. Happy coding.